I want to start off by talking about the looming sequester and how it will impact Baltimore City. Uh, this week, millions of dollars in vital funding may be cut off if Congress doesn't act. Today, I'm going to Washington uh, for the U.S. Conference of Mayors meeting. Every one of my colleagues is facing the same cuts, and we will meet with leaders in Washington to urge them to take immediate action to prevent harmful cuts to cities uh, like Baltimore. First and foremost, for, first and foremost, excuse me, there'll be tru troubling reductions in public safety spending. Sequestration would cut nearly $60 million from ATF and impact it to law enforcement operations and the industry oversight capabilities, nearly $100 million from the U.S. Attorney's current budget, and reduce the amount of competitive um, burn grants and uh, the drug court program. These cuts would have significant negative impacts on our efforts to reduce crime in Baltimore. Special agents in ATF Baltimore's office have uh, started the Maryland Exile Program, the Firearms uh, Trafficking Team, and the Regional Area Gang Enforcement Program. They oversee partnerships that combat dr um, gun violence by investigating armed violent offenders, career criminals, illegal gun traffickers, and criminal gangs. The Criminal Div Division of the U.S. Attorney's Office has 40 prosecutors, and cuts will increase the caseloads uh, for attorneys in the office, which may result in uh, more violent uh, offenders on the streets. Overall, violent crime has trended down for the last three years because of these partnerships that we've had with law enforcement. Any reduction in funding will, will put uh, people and communities at risk. Law enforcement is only is only one of the cuts uh, that we face as a result of sequestration. There will also be cuts to labor and workforce investment, housing, health, and education, over 300,000 for adult job services, which uh, supported 15,000 first-time job seekers at the city's uh, one-stop shop, one-stop career centers, excuse me. Uh, job training for low-income youth, $1.5 million from community development block grants, and funding for 1,100 families receiving assistance from Section 8 programs. Funding for the Office of Healthy Homes and Lead Hazard Control, Public Housing Capital and Operation Funds, Home Investment Partnership Program, $5 million in funding for Title I grants, which would lead to 100 teachers losing their jobs. Cuts to Head Start that would impact hundreds of students to uh, lead off to nearly, um, and it would lead to nearly the layoff of nearly 100 teachers from Head Start program. Funding for 30,000 participants in the WIC program, reduction in food, counseling, and supportive services for families and children, and thousands of HIV and AIDS tests um, conducted by the Centers of Con Disease Control would be um, in jeopardy. These cuts would directly impact the most vulnerable people in Baltimore City, poor families and children already struggling in this recovering economy. And last but not least, uh, the sequester would cut federal support for the Red Line Transit Project, which has been gaining support. Altogether, these cuts would be <coughs> devastating and it's unacceptable for Congress to stand idle as this deadline approaches. And I hope in the coming days our leaders will do what's necessary to give the American people uh, long-term relief from this, uh, it seems like, a cycle of uh, a dangerous game of chicken that we're playing, that's been being played in D.C. With that, I'll open up for questions. Um, Mayor, can you talk about the uh, hotel is going to be dipping into its own The hotel has been profitable uh, throughout its time here. However, the recent pro profits aren't enough to keep up with the projections that were made before the recession hit. So this isn't new. This is something that hotels are dealing with uh, across the country. Uh, in 2012, the hotel generated $100 million in economic impact for the city. And I'm confident uh, that in the future that we will continue the growth in our, in our hospitality and tourism industry, and the hotel will be a part of that. But looking forward, you have the, you're going to start paying principal on the bonds. I mean, do you, are you, will the hotel have enough money to cover that without dipping in further into hotel? 
Yes, because we're recovering. You know, again, the, the hotel, like many other hotels around the country uh, that were built during the same time, the, 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 the economics changed. Uh, I don't think anybody um, predicted the, uh, the Great Recession and the impact it would have across the board on uh, our, our local economy. Uh, certainly, as we planned for uh, the, the hotel, the projections did not include uh, the, the Great Recession. Uh, that being said, the, the hotel remains profitable, uh, generating over $100 million in economic impact for the city. And I'm uh, confident that it will continue to be. And, we'll, and, and as the economy gets stronger, so will the hotel. Well, according to your articles, you suggested that we have independent audits. And as I do, I went straight out to work uh, to get that done. So is this contract, uh, can you give us a little more of what your thought process is? <laughs> is it just? You have to get that from the DOD, guys. I mean, if you have technical questions, okay. one contract from city government, you have to talk to the DOD about it. Thank you. Um, there's a bill that uh, Jack Young has put forth about uh, ethics mm -hmm. uh, rules, and uh, he wants to make it possible for himself to vote on more things that he currently can't vote on. Mm -hmm. um, and the council has approved this. Um, it, it, it pulls back the restriction on voting for, for family members who work inside city government, um, their agencies. And I understand that you're going to, is this the first time you're not going to sign a bill? Um, put forth by the council, and can you explain why? No, the, my commitment was to work with the council and the council president uh, to continue the reforms that we put in place. Um, one of the first things I did uh, as mayor was strengthen the ethics, uh, ethics board, make it more independent, hire new uh, inspector general, uh, and continue our work to make sure that uh, the ethics of um, elected officials remain at, at the highest level. The, um, the legislation puts the city in line with the state's ethics uh, legislation. And um, while I understand the, the intent of the legislation and the, the desire of uh, the, the council to be on par with the state, um, I also have to balance the concerns of the ethics board. We have a lot of interest, and I'm hopeful. You know, I'm again looking for someone, uh, as was McClintock, very uh, not just capable but also very independent. And um, you know, I I don't like to uh, let any of these uh, appointments languish, and then we are actively searching for a replacement. Um, also, Last question: uh, The homicide rate, uh, according to Compton, just released, is up mm -hmm. significantly for the first two months. Mm -hmm. Any concerns on your? Or is the police department distracted? I mean. You know, we've had all this, we had the cadet shot, mm -hmm. you know, are there concerns about this sort of? Well, if there was a spike uh, after the police, uh, after the trainee shooting, I would say there's a possibility of a distraction, but that's not been the case. Uh, we started off a year um, higher than we were um, last year. Uh, if you take a look at the, the three-year totals, we're, you know, we're not far off, but I don't, I don't like to, to squabble about, you know, what percentage we're off when the, when the fact of the matter is behind each of these numbers is a life that we can't get back. So this work is very important. So whether we're a few points, a few percentage points off from two years ago or three years ago or how far we are from last year, uh, this is serious work. Uh, and I expect uh, the, uh, the police commissioner and the men and women of the police department to continue our trend toward uh, violent crime reduction which includes the homicide rate. And while we've had a significant reduction and continue to have a reduction in violent crime until the homicide rate drops, uh, drops dramatically, um, I'm not going to be satisfied. And we continue that fight. And um, it, it is 
it requires a significant uh, amount of effort, but it also requires the partnerships that we're working on, to, we're working to develop with the community. We can do only so much. Um, and then there's a gap uh, that needs to be filled by getting the information so we can, uh, you know, you might have, uh, unfortunately some of these are, um, we, we think are gang related incidents. And when you have one, you can have five because of retaliation. We need information from community members so we can work to uh, stop that cycle. And that is the work that we're, we're doing, improving community uh, engagement, building up trust uh, with the police officers on the street and community members so we can do, uh, we can continue our work of reducing violent crime in the city. And I know that that work uh, will uh, yield fruit. Thank you. Thank you.